All right, so even though we're not exactly doing a math lesson today, and you'll see why in a second, um, everything I am saying is important. So just try to keep up and ask questions um, as needed. But if you have not taken your unit six retake, you will do so tomorrow. Remember, if you were here for test correction today, I gave out a green paper and said you can use that on your retake. You still can. And if you weren't here, I could give you one and you could have a cheat sheet. But either way, like I want you to do better on your retake. So use that to your advantage. Uh, but only that green paper is what I like to do. All right, um, so you know who you are if you have not retaken, and if not, for some reason, it does say next to your name in the seating chart, so you can go look back at the slides if you need to. Yes, it's the last test we did right before spring break, so um, if you haven't thought about math at all over break, and you are one of those people that need to retake, look over the study guide, make sure if you have questions that you ask. I'll even answer your questions through email. All right, I'm really good at that because I also teach at ASU Prep Digital, like it's all online. Those kids do all their classes online. And if they have questions, they need to email. So I'm good at responding to emails for that. Um, but yeah, I'm also sending an email home to any students with a D or an F to you and your parents because you need to be aware. If we've reached the halfway point in the semester, if you have a D or an F currently, you are at risk of failing the class and not receiving credit. And then having to make up that credit in summer school or next year, whatever. I don't want you to have to do that. Um, so just make sure, do everything you can now. Odds are it's probably just a couple bad test scores. We've only done two unit tests. So there's still a chance that you could get back on track. But if you are just kind of breathing by on the homework, not really trying to understand it, or like not really trying to understand the study guide, just getting answers from someone else, then that's probably where the problem is because the study guides are modeled after the actual test. So if you don't know how to do a particular problem, tell me, I can try explaining it a different way. But if you're not saying anything, then how are you going to get better? I don't know. So consider coming to tutoring, um, asking questions that you have on the study guide, and then on a different tutoring, take retake your test. So you can still do that. Um, speaking of tutoring, I normally have it on Wednesdays this week, and I also sent an email to your parents and all of you this morning. This week, it'll have to be Tuesday, but so just this week, and then next week, it'll be back to normal on Wednesdays. There's also Saturday Academy this weekend and next weekend, so that's like a three-hour period of time. You don't have to stay for all the three hours, but that's a good chunk of time to get help from teachers in all the subjects. I won't be there because um, I have obligations on Saturdays, but there's other math teachers there. We all use the same study guide. We all give really similar tests, just different numbers, so they can help you and clarify those mistakes. And you can even retake the test in Saturday Academy too. You just have to ask. So any questions on tutoring, how to get your grade up, all of that stuff? Okay. Um, for after the retake, I want to say almost everyone's grades um, improved by a significant amount. So there's like a few kids that maybe like they didn't put their answers in Illuminate that I have to like find their tests and grade it. But for the most part, everyone's score is updated based on which one was the higher of the two for both portions. So do check that out um, and stay on top of your grade so that you don't have to redo the same stuff over and over. So what we will be focusing on these next two weeks are the Aspire math tests. If you're an upperclassman or like, well, it kind of depends what level you are. I've had in years where I've had all levels, like ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. And mind you, I only ever teach ninth grade math. So just letting you know, um, ninth graders have an 
ACT Aspire math test on April 5th. Juniors have their ACT that day or on the 4th. And if you're not a junior yet, maybe you're a sophomore, then you will be taking your ACT next year. So regardless of how, um, if you've passed your math class or not, you're still taking the ACT with your group of your grade level. So the big incentive for making sure that we are paying attention, that we are taking this seriously, this, prep, this test prep, is because these tests are attached to grade box. I do have a flyer back here if you want to like take a picture of it anytime. Um, they offer them for juniors taking the ACT and for ninth graders taking the ACT Aspire, which is like 98% of juniors. So you have to reach a certain score. And honestly, I think these tests are really easy. I don't think that they are as hard as what we've been doing in algebra, why they make you take them at the ninth grade level, I don't know, because it's mostly stuff from previous years. Now, if you're like, I really haven't paid attention in class for the past few years, but we'll do some test prep and hopefully that all like the problem solving techniques that I taught you, hopefully those come into play and that you can figure it out. But you just have to score a 428 or higher on the Aspire math test to be eligible for a grade level, and it applies to both semesters. So if you failed both semesters, you could get, you could honestly get your credit back for both semesters by doing well enough on this test. That's all you have to do instead of retaking the whole class over again. So that's one option. Um, for your English test, which I'll show you the schedule, you can see what tests are being given on what day. So on Tuesday, April 4th, you'll take all your ELA tests. There's an English reading and writing portion, but combined, they like average it out. If you score a 428 on that, then you can get a grade bump in your English class for both semesters. For the math, it's just one test, score high enough on that, and you get a grade bump. Score high enough on your science for that one, they require a 430, um, but now you can get a bump in your science class. So really great opportunities here, especially like if you got a C and you wanna to get to a B or you had a B and you wanna to get to an A, another incentive for you, not just in case that failed. All right, questions so far. So this is what those Horizon benchmarks have been preparing you for, by the way, to take tests in a time setting. Um, I can tell you the normal ACT is 60 questions in 60 minutes. So on average, how much does that give you per question? And that's what the ACT Aspire is trying to model itself after um is one question a minute as well i off the top of my head don't remember how many questions are on the act aspire but and it's also hard to look up because they have aspire tests for like every grade level but if i remember correctly it's like 70 minutes so i would say it's around that many questions so just keep that in mind also, like those time tests I've been giving you, that's also what I've been trying to prepare you for, is when you have to take tests like this under a time limit. Um, I can share with you, I've taken a ton of like high stakes testing in my high school career and beyond. Um, in elementary school, we had to take the AIMS like every single year. I don't know how it is for you guys, because it changed like right after I graduated high school. But I take the AIMS every single year, in high school, you had to um, pass the AIMS in order to graduate. I don't know. I hope they bring that back because I think I think that also should be something too. I take these state tests just for like the school labels. I think it should mean something more. Um, but I've taken like AP tests, like the tests that you have to pay money and score high enough so that you could receive college credit. 
I've taken also the SAT and ACT, and I proctor those quite frequently on the weekends. So lots of scholarship money attached to those types of tests. So it's really great that you get to practice it and get a great bump out of it. So we share some test strategies with you about that. But um, what are some test strategies that you guys are familiar with? And while you think about that, I want you to go on your Chromebook and go to Google. So you can pull up the practice test with me. And in Google, I want you to type in test nav. I'm sure that there is an app on your computer, but we don't need to use the app. We can just find it on Google. All right, but type in test nav, click on the very first one. And have you guys seen this before? All right, if you've been in Arizona around here, probably have in your previous years. Um, for us, we will be taking the ACT Aspire, so you'll click on that. And on test day, you'll be given a username and a password, and then you take your test. We today are going to look at the exemplars. So again, go to Google, go to test nav, click on the first one, click on ACT Aspire. And then now we're clicking on exemplars down here. And since I'm math focused, we're gonna look at our early high school grade nine and 10. But if you want to practice for your other classes with these exemplars, you can, there's there for every subject, but we're gonna look at math grade nine and 10. All right, now the, this will look exactly the same, except for there will probably be more questions in 36, um, but these instructions are in there too. So whatever test you're planning to take, for example, like the SAT and ACT, there's like workbooks out there that people spend lots of money on to get a good enough score so that they could get into whatever college they wanna get into and have like a decent scholarship. So Consider that when you do have your high sig testing. Um, I can tell you when I did AP testing for um, history and English, I scored high enough that I didn't have to take those classes in college. And college classes are a lot of money. They charge like, if it's like at a community college, they charge like three or four hundred dollars per credit. And most classes are like three or four credits. So, and then at the university, it's even more than that. So consider that too, going the AP testing route um, so that you could get college credit or dual enrollment. Dual enrollment is probably better because there's not high stakes testing involved. Brianna? When Julian comes back. All right, but here's how the test is set up. I'll just kind of skim through this. You could read along. Um, also note, this is just an exemplar. So this doesn't save your score or like your answers. Um, we will take this exemplar later this week and I'll have you write down your answers and we'll go over them. But just know if you're practicing, sure if you're practicing for your other classes, just know it doesn't save your answers. So you'll have to write them down. Da -da 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 -da. Any multiple choice will have five choices, just so you know. So what are the odds of guessing the right answer if there's five choices? What percent did you say? No. 12.5? No. 20%. Great practice for your test while you're gonna take them. But yeah. If there's five choices, I don't think any of these are multi-select, by the way. So if there's five choices, one out of five, one divided by five is 0.20, that's 20%. So yeah, 20% chance of just guessing the right answer. Um, if you can eliminate the obviously wrong choices, then you can bump up that percentage. 
but just FYI, five choices. Um, you will take this test on the computer in April, by the way. I've seen it where I think the one that you would also take your junior year is also on the computer. But when I proctor on like Saturdays, it's on paper. So like depending on which day you're taking it, um, there are strategies for each. But since it's on the computer, I'm not going to go over like making sure you have a number two pencil and all that stuff, whatever. Um, just make sure that you answer all the questions in the computer is what I'll say. Never leave anything blank. So a few more about the questions. Not all of them are multiple choice. Some of them are like essay questions, like how your constructed responses have been given to you. Um, that's what I've been trying to prepare you for as well, is this test with those constructed response questions. So just make sure you answer the question entirely. Don't go off on a random tangent. You don't have to give me a whole paragraph unless it requires you to, but it doesn't. It just wants you to answer the question fully and explain it in complete sentences. So there is that. You are allowed to use a calculator. Note that for the ACT Aspire ninth grade, you do not get Desmos, okay? You don't. On the ACT your junior year, unless they change it, you do get Desmos, but for some reason they don't want you to use Desmos at ninth grade. However, you can use your own graphing calculator if you have one. If you don't have one, and there's also like some calculators are prohibited, but you can look up that list online or I'll make it available to you one day. But um, graphing calculators are anywhere from like $50 to about 100. Invest in one, you'll use it for the rest of your high school career and depending on what college you go to, I know my college didn't let us use graphing calculators, they made us use Excel, um, but you'll probably use it in college too. So consider investing in one, you could always sell it at the end of your high school career if you want, you could buy a used one. You can also, if you can't afford one, check one out at the bookstore. Um, same thing like as your Chromebook. If you lose it, you have to pay for it, but don't lose it. And then you don't have to buy a calculator. So they are supposed to be enough for anyone that needs one. But the earlier you get it, the more you can practice with it. And then you'll know that you can um, use it on your test. If you, because I don't know who you're taking it with yet. If you are taking your math test on that Wednesday and the teacher tries telling you that you can't use your graphing calculator, that you have to use the one that is in the test nav, tell them to call me because you are absolutely allowed to use your graphing calculator unless it's like one of those really fancy expensive ones that like have other internet access capabilities. You can use your own graphing calculator. You can also use your own like normal scientific calculator. Let me show you an example. Like the TI-30X. Here, I'll show it in this camera. Can you guys see it? It's these like, they're not very expensive. I don't know how much they are now, but I bought one online for like less than $10 from someone that used it. So, Probably at the store, they're probably like $13. So consider buying it. I like the ones where you can type in multiple things at once because you'll see why when I press start, why I don't like that calculator that's in the test nav. But there is one in the test nav should you forget your calculator. When you take your ACT though, as a junior, whether it's on a Saturday or whether it's like that day, make sure you don't forget it because that sinks. You can't, they say that all questions are answerable without a calculator, but like now you're just making it harder on yourself. So just get one. Question so far. All right. 
Um, and then it gives you some other information unless indicated otherwise. Diagrams are not necessarily drawn to scale. Geometric figures are in the plane. The word line talks about a straight line and the word average indicates when you add up the numbers and divide by how many you add. That's in the instructions. I don't know that this is available for you during the whole test, but that's how the test is set up. So questions on that. All right. So also know that on test day, that the second you hit start, the timer starts. And maybe not many of you in here qualify for more time, but maybe some of you do, so I'm gonna say it. Whatever time is given to you up here, you are entitled to every second of that time. Um, like some people qualify for more time um, for like certain things, reasons. Um, and you will know who you are because you would have had like meetings about it and all that stuff. But whatever time it is counting down over here, you are entitled to every second of that. So again, if your teacher, whoever's talked to you and tries to say like, no, you need to turn it in, again, tell them to call me because you're entitled to that time. Um, so yeah, don't press start until the teacher tells you. If you press start accidentally, just get started. Start reading it, start answering, because on average, it's about a minute a question. Um, so here's an example of one of the questions. We'll really dive into these another day. But as you can see, this one's multiple choice. There's five options, just like they told you there would be. So again, the odds of picking, guessing the right one is how much percent? 20%, one out of five. If you can eliminate the obviously wrong answers, then it's more likely you'll pick the right one. So this one says, Juliana divided a part of a number line from zero to one into sections of equal length. She plotted points M on the number line. One of the following circles is shaded to represent a fraction that's equivalent to the number represented by point M. Which one? Okay, so say you're taking this test and you have no clue, like absolutely none. What should you do? So this is where we get into like those test strategies. So say you get a problem, you read it, maybe you reread it and you have no clue what to do. Do you sit there and stare at it for five more minutes? Yes, no. No, what could you do? So what are some test strategies you could do? Okay, just guess. Would you come back to it later? No, just guess. Okay, if you were just guessing, so maybe it is crunch time and you have to submit an answer because you should never leave your test blank. Um, if you were just guessing, and again, you can't eliminate any of them for some reason, which one would you pick? Okay. Um, I've always been told C. For some reason, when people make tests, they love to put the right answer like toward the middle of your options. Not all the time, but if you, can, if you can't eliminate any of them, pick C. Um, what I would say is eliminate as many as you can and then Yes, if you have to, between the ones that are left. I would also say that if you have no clue how to do a question, just write it down maybe, like this is question one, write it down on your scratch paper and then come back to it later. Still don't leave it blank, like maybe do guess and then make sure you make a note to come back to it because that's happened to me before too where I saved all the ones I didn't know how to do until the end, and then I was like really short on time that I didn't even have enough time to fill in the bubbles for my guesses. So I just guess, come back to it later, and change my answer. Since it's on a computer, you can do that. I would not recommend that for like a bubble test. Um, just saying. All right, but looking at this number line, uh, 
it says that it's split into equal parts. So how many equal sections are there here? <clears throat> okay, I heard four, I heard three. Anyone think five? Okay, so it's actually four. So when you count like on a number line or on a coordinate plane, the number you start at, don't count that as one. All right, so here's one section. You can even like label it if you want. Here's section two, here's section three, and then here's section four. So there's four sections total. Um, what section or point is M on out of those four? It's on the third one. And our task is to pick a like circle that is shaded with the same fraction that the number line is. So if my fraction's three fourths, just looking at this, don't tell me what the right answer is yet. Which ones are obviously not the right answer? Okay, why not B? Definitely not enough shaded. I mean, I could make the fraction and like know for sure, but three fourths, that's almost the whole. B is definitely not going to be the answer. Are there any others that we can obviously eliminate? Scroll down. Maybe C because the pieces aren't even. Um, not only that, but like if I had a circle and it was cut into four equal pieces and shaded three fourths of the way, does that piece really look like this one? It looks like this one's a little more than 75%. So again, eliminate as many as you can. So now we're between three possible answers. Do you know what the chances of picking um, one and three, like what percentage that is? Good, about 33% now, which is more than the 20% of guessing the right answer. Um, so yeah, since we're on this one, let's actually figure it out. Um, so like for A, how many pieces total do I have in A? Okay, good. How many of them are shaded? And hopefully you know how to convert fractions to decimals. What's the equivalent decimal for this? 0.8, what's the equivalent decimal for three fourths? 0.75, so it's not gonna be A because it's not the same decimal, so it's not the same fraction. FYI, if you don't know how to convert fractions to decimals, just do numerator, division sign, denominator. Also on a side note, this is the calculator they give you. Not my favorite. I like ones where you could type in the whole thing and then press enter and see what you type in, but that's what you have if you don't bring a calculator. All right, so now we're between D and E. So now it's a 50-50 chance of guessing the right answer, but we could figure it out. Um, does D have equal slices? How many slices does it have? Okay, yes, how many of them are shaded? Is six out of 10 the same as 75%? No, it's 60%, so move on. Well, it must be E now, because process of elimination. But how many slices are in E? 12, how many of them are shaded? And that fraction is equivalent to this. I also know that because when I put nine divided by 12 in my calculator, I also get 0.75. So you know how to do it, do it. If you don't know, just go back to it later. Um, real quick, let me show you this next one. We're not necessarily gonna do it. Oops, hold on. So here's an example of those essay type questions. Don't just skip these because you're lazy or you don't think it really matters or if you don't know what to do. <laughs> Pretend like you know what to do. 
Sometimes the people that are grading these aren't necessarily masters in that subject area. Make it till you make it. Also, when you're making sure to answer these questions, use like what the sentence is or what the question is asking you to make sure that you're answering it fully. So it says, explain what a line of symmetry is. Well, my first part of my answer would be a line of symmetry is whatever it is, and then a period. Writing complete sentences. So that way they think that you're smarter, even if you don't know what the answer is. Um, then there's still another part. Don't just skip it. Explain why the dashed line drawn in the figure below is not a line of symmetry. So you would say the line drawn is not a line of symmetry because blah, blah, blah. All right, um, we'll end it there. We'll take it back up tomorrow. But feel free to play around with it. It doesn't save your scores. So we'll do this in class and write down our answers. Just giving you a sneak peek. Yeah.